we're going to just say, um, do we know how many days she's been incarcerated? 55 today, sir. Okay, so we're going to do 50 days um, at OCJ with, and we're stipulating that credit for all time served has been served and that probation will terminate upon release from the jail. Okay. But there should be nothing in this case that's holding her. She should be able to free to go to Oklahoma, back to Oklahoma. And there's a $100 cost of prosecution? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. Any other outstanding financial probation for Ms. Campos? Um, I paid all my court costs. It's, it's like a court cost. When there's a VOP, they have a charge of okay. $100. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Okay, that's fine. Ms. Campos, if you'll raise your right hand, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. You can put your hand down. Ms. Campos, so do you understand that if I accept your plea that you're waiving your right? This was a VOP, correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Okay. That you're waiving your right to an evidentiary hearing where the state would have to prove the violation of probation against you? Yes, sir. Do you understand, and, and that's good that the ch state changed that from guilty to withhold. Yes, ma'am, probation. Okay. So, Ms. Campos, um, I don't see any other downside other than the $100 cost of prosecution. How long will it take you to pay that? I could pay at the moment I get out, sir. Okay. How about if we say within 30 days? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Ms. Campos, I do accept your plea. Adjudication is withheld. You're sentenced to 50 days in the Okaloosa County Jail with credit for all time served, and the state stipulates that you've already served that amount of time. You'll need to pay the $100 cost of prosecution. If you fail to pay that within 30 days from today, it will go to a civil lien or judgment. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Good luck to you. So, yes, ma'am. And her supervision is terminated. It's terminated after, the, after she gets released. So is it technically it's reinstated terminated. and modified and then automated? No, we, we just want to terminate now. Whatever we need to do to accomplish that now. Because she's already, we're, we're, we sentenced her to 50 days and we're stipulating that she's already served that. And that was the only, that was the only condition of probation. So it should be able to terminate now. Your supervision is terminated today. Okay. Okay, Thank you, sir. And yes, you are to be that she's no longer being supervised. The hundred dollars would be payable to the clerk. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Schweitzer. I appreciate it. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes. Good morning, Ms. Starks. Yes, Judge, this is Ms. Starks to my left. Um, Your Honor, if we could uh, put this on the afternoon to roll it to the afternoon, I want to talk with Mr. Uh, Snell. Um, no information has been filed on the new case, but she does have four VOPs that are close to resolving. If we can put it to the afternoon. Okay. Mr. Gomez, why haven't information been filed in these various cases? Which, which ones, Your Honor? I'm sorry. Uh, Rainey, Rodriguez, St uh, Stafford, Starks. Uh, Start with Starks. I can't. I can't answer that. I'm not the ASA. It's on that case, Your Honor. Okay. If you'll rattle some cages and tell them that the court's concerned about so many or not, because it's my understanding that there were also one, two, three, four that were just filed like yesterday or today. Okay. okay. Yes, Your Honor. So, do you want Miss Starks back at 1:30 or at? 2.30. Um, I believe Mr. Snell is going back at 1.30. You should be, yes. Um, either 1.30, Judge. I'm okay. going to talk to her over the, the lunch break. Okay. Your Honor, can I, um, can you read, can you state those names again? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to go back and make sure that they get filed so that we have a hard copy when those defendants show up to play day. Okay. Today. Okay. Ms. Starks, I'll see you this afternoon. Okay. okay. You take that with you. Um, as far as the ones that were just very recently filed, M McNamara, Oglesby, Rice, and Sawyer. Was Rice filed? Yes, this morning, like 45 minutes ago. Okay. Um, which 
What, are there still ones that we do not have an info on? Correct. Which ones are those? Rainey. Okay. Rodriguez. Okay. Stafford and Starks. Stafford and who else? I'm sorry. Starks. Starks. The Starks. Okay. I will make sure to get those filed before we show back up the second. Okay. Or somebody will make. I will make sure somebody gets yeah. it. Thank you. Okay, Rachel, who's next? Oh, well, Mr. Rudolph. Your Honor, this is Mr. Rudolph in 22 CF 2613. If we can also put Mr. Rudolph at the 130 docket so I can talk to Mr. Slick, possible offer to get a release today. Okay. Mr. Rudolph, I'll see you at 130, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, Judge, this is Mr. Garcia in 22 CF 2966. If I can get uh, a date in May with subs. Okay. Um, and of course, I just want to, uh, if, if with permission from the court, if we do reach an agreement, uh, I believe those Thursday dates that were also present here, we could also enter a plea. In. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Rico Garcia, what your attorney's asking for from the court's perspective is get a backstop on this. Let's get an end to it. You know, I, your, your face is always, I mean, you're always very pleasant when you come in. You know, we got to get an end to your case. And so I'll set it for May 16th at 2.30. So that's for basically the judge trial. Uh, if it's not resolved before May 16th at 2.30, and everybody will put on their evidence, and then I'll determine whether there's a violation. Uh, and then we'll talk about sentencing. So, but what also Mr. Cox stated is true is, if the state offers you something before that, that you want to accept a plea offer, Mr. Cox can set it on just about any Thursday. Uh, and then I've got other criminal days that Mr. Cox can set it, okay? So I'll see you no later than May 16th. No later than May, May 16th? Yes, sir. Yeah. And that's with Sub Connor? Yes, we were correct. Yep. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. So it's at 2.30. Thank, Thank you. Yes, sir. Jacob Roberson. Thank you. Hello, oh, Mr. Roberson. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Your Honor, we're here in 24 CF 184. We'll be entering a denial. Uh, my client also has a new law in front of this court. That's case number 24 CF 824. Now that case is set for plea day arraignments on May 16th already. Okay. Of course, there's no information on that new law yet. I'm asking if we just pair them together, and place it on that 516 date. Okay. Any problem with running that on the arraignment? No, it'll just be at, it'll be on two separate dockets. It'll be at 9 a.m. because it won't. Okay. Mr. Robertson, I'll see you back here on May 16th, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, Mr. Seelock. Paul, good morning. Your Honor, we're here in the 2020 CF 2342. We entered denial. Um, if we could place this on on the May 23rd date, um, my client was here earlier in the week and we set his other case, the 23 CF 2053, on that May 23rd already. Okay. Mr. Seelock, I'll see you on both of your cases no later than May 23rd. If the state offers you something that you want to accept before that date, Mr. Koch can set it here. Yep. See you, Paul, tomorrow. Thank you, Judge. Koch. Who is that? Sorry, I'm no, not worried. Seawalk. Paul. And we set that 523. Yep. Hello, well, Mr. Mays. Hi, Your Honor, this is Mr. Mays. Um, we did file a motion to reduce bond and reinstate previously revoked bonds. I talked to Mr. Gomez. I believe the state's going to. I have no objection to the motion. Um, 
I did talk with Mr. Mays briefly, and I know he wants to address the court. <clears throat> the state had indicated to me, frankly, just flat out told me, that they wanted Mr. Mays to be on a GPS monitor. Um, Mr. Mays is going to request that the court not require the monitor. Um, he would like to address the court directly. I have advised him not to talk about the facts of the specific case. I believe he wants to talk about the underlying conviction from the late 1990s, but um, I, I did tell Mr. Mays I, I have no problem with adults who want to address the court as long as they're fully aware of everything they say could be used against them. Understand. Mr. Mays, before we do that, let me. I made a lot of copies. I highlighted different things doing my homework. So if you'll, first off, to the state, so you stipulate to the motion however you are seeking a GPS month. That's correct, Your Honor, and that's namely because um, I mean, probation, to be quite frank, requested that we object to the bond. I explained to them why we were not objecting. Um, however, they did state they wanted a GPS to be placed on Mr. Mays, and I, I, don't, I don't disagree. Given these facts, there is a lot that I have to flesh out, which is why I am agreeing to a bond. However, given the charges, the underlying charge that gives rise to these charges, we would request and, and do agree with probation that a GPS monitor should be placed on Mr. Mays. Okay, thank you. Mr. And Mays, again, let me let me look refresh my memory, okay? And briefly what well, before you before yeah. I stop talking, Your Honor, I did I did review 943.0435. I did not see any statutory requirements that a monitor be attached. Um, right. of course I I read it rather rather quick and it is a lengthy statute, so maybe I missed something, but I did not see any statutory requirement for monitor and and what you attached to the motion you know certainly supported your argument that's why i attached it yes sir yes yes ma'am i'm getting emails from the sex offender officer <coughs> she is stating that the gps is a condition of his supervision okay a gps is a condition of his super what does that mean exactly I mean, does it mean statutorily? So this is his supervision. These are some VOPs, and he's got to be on the GPS anyway. Well, his supervision terminated on April 13th of this year in 21C of 1932. I know he would still have to report. Obviously, it's been told. Um, I. <clears throat> but if it's told, and then we release him, I mean, he's not. It would seem counterintuitive to say he doesn't have to continue with the conditions of similar conditions to what his probation I, was. I agree. I mean, I'm just pointing out on the, the violation report, his term date was April 13th of 2024. understand. Okay. Mr. Mays, do you want to testify? Is that what you're saying? I would like to try to plead to you. Okay. If you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, sir, I do. Thank you, sir. You can put your hand down. Oh, Please. Yes, sir. Mr. Brown, um, when I first moved to Florida, I moved to Crestfield, and unfortunately for me, I saw a girl getting out of a police officer's car, which was Officer Toby Baker. At the time, it was, was 24 years ago. Um, I had never been in any trouble other than I think I had one domestic violence and I because I was young and dumb, got drunk, and I did everything I was supposed to do. I haven't been in trouble in 23 years, and when I did get in trouble for that, I don't know if you see how fast I was convicted of it, but it was like that. My public defender at the time told me if I took the DNA test that I would be proven innocent or we could overturn my case if the DNA test proved I didn't do anything because I've never done anything with that young lady. And I had a DNA test and so have like 15 other people and they still haven't found the father to that baby and it's because that baby belonged to a police officer and they railroaded me and nobody ever gave me a chance. <clears throat> Just to kind of give the court some background, because I did actually look into the underlying conviction. Um, <clears throat> So Mr. Mays was arrested, I believe, in 1997. I don't, it might have been 1998. It's kind of hard to, actually a lot of the documents are still available on Benchmark to look at. The thing I couldn't track down was what subsection of 800.04 he was actually charged with. It's not in the information from the original charge. He ended up pleading to attempted 
um, the, the attempted crime, I cannot recall what it was. The allegation basically was that Mr. Mays had impregnated, I uh, believe, a 16-year-old girl at the time. He was roughly about 19, 20 years old. So that's what he's talking about, the DNA test. He's talking about the, there was a, a, the victim in the case was, she became pregnant. And so I don't know why it was pled to an attempt. Um, I've reviewed the statutory language, and unfortunately, attempts are covered. Um, as a matter of fact, the state had to file a motion after the plea agreement was filed asking for a designation in this particular matter. And I, I reviewed that motion. Um, it looked legally sufficient to me. Um, I would love to be able to attack the underlying conviction. Um, I don't know if I have a mechanism to do that. It's obviously it's been a quarter Mr. of a Hunt, century. Let me ask you this. So if that case was back in 1997 or there about what because I didn't do homework on looking at the underlying. Certainly. What, what about the 21 case? Well, the 21, and that's, uh, the statute actually authorizes removing somebody from a registration, but there are very, I mean, you cannot be arrested for anything for 25 years as a minimum. Um, the t I did not represent Mr. Mays in the 21 CF case. I don't know why he, he was on probation for that, but he is on probation for failing to register. Okay, that was what it, the allegation was. Or in the 21 case, 23 case, same thing, failure to These register. These are all failure to register. I, when I reviewed his criminal history, he does have a couple of misdemeanors here. They're mainly, he's got a lot of speeding tickets. Um, but uh, there is a significant gap in any sort of the concerning criminal history. I mean, he, he did go pretty much up until about 2020 with no issues. And I didn't mean to cut Mr. Mays. I just wanted to fill you in so you're not like, what is he talking about DNA? Gotcha. Okay, Mr. Mays, what else and do you want me to do? As far as the 2020 conviction, I've had the same um, SO officer, Officer Henry, has come into my house for the last 13 years. I've lived in the same house for 15 years up until recently. And he sort of kind of knew about things in my case and he was giving me the benefit of the doubt. That was the reason I did need the failure to appear. Everybody was always telling me you gotta get a lawyer and get back in front of a judge. I paid 8500 to a lawyer and I ended up with the three years of probation in the house. I wasn't, I didn't do it intentionally. An uh, officer of the court on body cam did know I had my Facebook and stuff for the 2021 charge and I just, you know, was not necessarily trying to get in court that way, but I wanted to be able to tell a judge my side of the story and why I shouldn't be a registered sex offender. Nobody's ever given me that opportunity to talk to them. The State Department, none of them. The state attorney, I've never been able to tell my side of the story at all. I just took those charges because I was scared at 19 years old to go to prison. My public defender told me I could get hurt and may not come home. I was best that I took the plea that they were offering. It's the only reason I took it. I would have went to, I would have asked to go to trial. She had the baby six months after I was put on the registry in January. She had her baby in June. I would have fought that mine the entire way had I been given the proper legal advice at that time. I understand. Mr. Mays, were you wearing a GPS monitor when they arrested you this last time? Yes, sir. Okay. And Your Honor, if I, if I may, um, I want to point out that I believe the he's going to be past term on some of these. And so if he's released, he's not going to have any sort of monitoring. I also want to draw attention to the, to the Jessica Lunsford Act. Anytime that you have a defendant who is the, the crime that they were put on the registry for involves a victim under the age of 15, anytime they're on supervision, the court is required to have a GPS monitor placed on that defendant. Um, in this situation, I believe the information alleged that she was 12 um, in the underlying. And so given that the state is requesting that this GPS monitor be placed on him. I mean, we are agreeing to um, let him out on bond so that we can figure out and really flesh out what happened with these failures to register. However, we need some assurance that we're going to know where he's at. He was homeless when he was found for these cases. Um, and so given that, I think there's ample evidence to support the fact that he should be placed on a GPS monitor if he's released. So. 
I understand. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mays, your, your motion is granted with the caveat that you will need to wear a GPS monitor at the minimum amount per day. Your Honor, from what I understand, though, because he's past term on probation, he'll have to be on the GPS with pretrial services. I agree. So pretrial services will be the one that will monitor the GPS monitor. Uh, when will I see Mr. Mays next? Um, he is on the May 13th docket, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Mays, you know, talk to Mr. Kleins about all those things that you just talked about. Mr. Kleins is a very competent attorney. If he needs to refer you to somebody else that may be able to address some of those older concerns, the ones back from 1997, or, you know, talk to him about that, okay? Uh, and I'll see you back here no later than May 13th. Are there bonds that are being reduced? Like are being Mr. Reduced? Kleins, yes, sir. why don't you tell the clerk expressly what granting your motion? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Um, so, Madam Clerk, the request was to <clears throat> reduce cash or professional bonds in 24 CF 512 and 24 CF 555. Um, those are whatever the cash or professional amounts are in those cases. Um, and the I'm trying to review the motion real quick to see if I included them. So in 24 CF 512, there's a $2,000 cash or professional bond that would be reduced to a signature bond. In 24 CF 555, there was a $3,500 cash or professional bond that would be reduced to a $3,500 signature bond. Um, <clears throat> His bonds in 21 CF 1932 and 23 CF 2367 will be reinstated. Thank you, sir. And we'll submit a, an order to the court with the, the language. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Mays, before you leave, I heard you, okay? I heard what you testified to. Thank you, sir. Okay, that's all we have on the nine o'clock. That's all I've got. I've got the one thirty. You want to do this? No victim. Yes, Please. Christina Rice with Mr. Cox. Christina Rice with Mr. Cox. Good morning, Mr. Rice. Did they give you the copy? Yes, sir. Your Honor, this is Mrs. Rice. Hi. Um, information has been filed this morning. I did provide a, I have an offer. Good. And I'd like to um, talk to her during the lunch hour. Okay. Um, and so if we could put her on that 130 docket. Okay. Ms. Rice, I'll see you this afternoon at 130. Okay. I'm going to talk about that offer. Yes, but we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Hello, Mr. Sawyer. Good morning. Good morning, Alex. This was today. Your Honor, um, we see the information today. We'll be entering a not guilty to all four counts, way former reading. My client has two other cases in front of this court, Judge. The 23 CF 2432, it's a VOP, and a 24 CF 4010, it's a new law. Both of those are already set for the 513. If we can take this case and also add it with that. Okay. Mr. Sawyer, I'll see you back here on May 13th on all of your cases, okay? What does that mean exactly? Because I never really understand. I'm just like hurrying up and waiting for the process or something. Can I go ahead and do, like, do something and take a plea? Is the, if the state has offered you like, anything, does the state have a daughter. Department of Corrections and Incarceration offer, Your Honor. Okay. So, Mr. Sawyer, they're offering you, whatever they're offering you, it's to go to prison. Okay, well, how, how long? I mean, because I got a six year old daughter, I got a family and a job. Yes, okay. Like, you, you ask them and let's see if they know the time period. Hold on, Your Honor, I'm having to pull if this is not my case. It's hard to tell a six year old where you're at. Yes, sir. I bet. Mr. Gomez, I believe. 
before this new law was filed on, I think it was 18 months, if that reflects in Mr. Snow's. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up being right at, I think it's like 30, 32 months. 32 months in prison mm -hmm. is the state's offer. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Even if I'm innocent of this? One second. Don't make any statements, please. Uh, that's, that's why Mr. Koch is asking to, to bring you back on May 13th is and where then, he can flesh out those things about you. And then when I come here on the 13th, it gets pushed off for another month? We, we will set, if Mr. Koch and the state are ready to go to trial, I we'll want to go to, go to trial. At the end Can of I May? put in a speedy trial right now? And I want a uh, bond reduction. I'm still being held with no bond. Your your mouthpiece is Mr. Koch. Please. So I'll see you on May 13th. And I would okay. like a speedy trial. I know. They filed this this morning. I'm gonna come talk to you, but take that with you, okay? That's in right. your charges. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good, how are you? Your Honor, can I just have a brief moment? Thank you, Judge. Your Honor, um, Mr. St. Jean is here on two cases. It's 24 CF 586 and the 24 CF 651. This will be a change of plea to no contest. Client will be adjudicated guilty, 18 months of the standard probation, $40 per month cost of supervision. There's $1,030 in court costs, 250 defense costs, 50 hours of community service, both counts to run concurrent, in both cases run concurrent. Your Honor, if I may approach with the plea form and the score sheet. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. St. Jean, if you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Thank you. You can put your hand up. Mr. St. Jean, did you read the plea agreement? Yes, I did. Do you understand it? Yes, I did. Did you discuss it with your attorney? I did. Did he answer all of your questions? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with his representation? No. Did, did you sign the plea agreement? I did. Sir St. Jean, on that last one, you said, yeah, I guess. Any questions you have for the court or your attorney of the state? Um, I just want to move forward with all this and get out of jail and, you know, try to get back to my normal lifestyle. Okay. I'm pretty behind on Okay. And you understand everything that's in the written plea agreement? I do. Okay. Mr. St. Jean, I do accept your plea. You're adjudicated guilty. You're sentenced to 18 months probation. That's to run concurrently, run at the same time in each case and count. You'll need to pay the $40 per month cost of supervision, the court costs in the new case. They're both new cases? Yes. yes okay. Judge. Court costs in both of the cases, total of $250 public defender's fee, and perform 50 hours of community service work. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good luck to you. Thank you.
Is that what you expected? Yeah. Okay. Designable data. All right. Here at the top. This is Clayton Allman before the court in 23 CF 987. Madam Clerk, the intention is to enter a plea that also includes a misdemeanor. That misdemeanor would be 22 MM 1796, which is a misdemeanor violation of probation. May I have just a moment, Judge? Yes, sir. Mr. Homer, while he's doing that, if you'll raise your right hand, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you go. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You can put your hand down. Yep. calls for Mr. Ullman to enter a plea of no contest as charged uh, to the state counts three and four. What can I help you with? <laughs> uh, counts three and four are on the new case are second degree misdemeanors. Uh, and I was going to ask the state for time served, even though they can't be placed under 24 months probation on those counts. No objection. <clears throat> so, okay. Judge, it would be a plea of no contest as charged, 24 months probation with special conditions of a substance abuse evaluation, 24 hours of community service work, take no action on any failure to appear, standard court cost with a $615, $150 cost of defense. As stated, counts three and four are second degree misdemeanors, and those counts would be time served. He would not be placed on probation. In 22 MM 1796, we would stipulate that this court's jurisdiction to handle the misdemeanor. That is a misdemeanor violation of probation, and the agreement is for 90 days in the Okaloosa County Jail with credit for time served to revoke and terminate that supervision. With an additional, and I have not written in this into the agreement, um, but there would be an additional $50 BOP fee and $50 cost of prosecution. And we would ask the court for a, uh, a time period before the financials are sent to collections in that case. So an adjudication of guilt on both? It would be an adjudication of guilt on the misdemeanor counts. Okay. It would be a withhold of adjudication on counts one and two, which are the felony counts. Got you. Okay. May I approach? Yes, sir. Mr. Homer, if you've already, I already swore you in, so Mr. Homer, did you read the plea agreement? Yes, sir. Do you understand it? Yes, sir. Did you discuss it with your attorney? Yes, sir. Did he answer all of your questions? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with his representation? Yes, sir. Did you sign the plea agreement? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, let's go to the one thing that Mr. McKinney said is not written in here. So do you agree uh, to the $100 basically cost of prosecution in the misdemeanor case? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Homer, I do accept your plea. Adjudication is withheld <clears throat> in the felony case. You're sentenced to time served on counts three and four. Sentenced to 24 months probation in counts one and two to run concurrently, run at the same time. You'll need to submit to a substance abuse evaluation within 30 days. Has Mr. Ulmer already served the 90 days in the misdemeanor case? Judge, he's been incarcerated since at least uh, February 14th, so okay. he's close to that, but okay. I believe that Okaloosa County Jail would still need to calculate exactly how much credit he has. Okay. So, Mr. Ulmer, you'll need to submit to a substance abuse evaluation within 30 days from your release from jail. Yes, sir. And if any treatments recommended, begin that within 60 days from your release from jail. You'll need to perform 24 hours of community service work 
pay the court costs, $150 public defender's fee. And there will be $40 per month cost of supervision. In the misdemeanor case, adjudicated guilty, and you were adjudicated guilty of the misdemeanors in the felony case, counts three and four. Misdemeanor case, adjudicated guilty, sentenced to 90 days in the Okaloosa County Jail with credit for all time served. Your supervision in that misdemeanor case is revoked. You'll need to pay the $100 cost of prosecution. How long will you need to pay that after you get out? Well, when I get out, a month. Okay. So why don't we say 60 days, okay? That total amount on that case, Judge, and I'm looking at it um, on the, the clerk's side is approximately $90, is that correct? Yeah, the, uh, I paid it up. He, he paid $1,100, so he's only got $90 to pay on the misdemeanor case. In, including the, and then an additional $100. Correct, right? plus that additional So 190 Correct. So if you fail to pay those amounts within 60 days from your release from jail, then those amounts will go to a civil lien or judgment. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Homer. Good luck to you, Thank sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Is a withhold on the felonies? But the, the account for is a DWLS, so as a judication. Probation on the way out. Thank you. Judge, there is a matter off docket that I would want to approach with a Ms. Burrick and I'm on. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm David at Family Vision of Crestview. We've been providing excellent optical service for Northwest Florida for over 34 years. Come in and let us take care of you.